Hi everybody and thanks for joining our webinar this month on equine behavior, um, calming supplements and strategies. And I know that oftentimes our first port of call when a horse seems a little stressed is I need a, a calming supplement. But I think it's important to realize that there are a whole slew of different reasons why a horse gets stressed. And I think we need to go through each of these and answer these questions first because no amount of calming supplement will take away the stress. And I think that it's really important that we try to, as with any problem that we're trying to deal with, that we get to the root of that problem and we try and fix that versus just putting a Band-Aid on it and, and then feeding a a calming supplement, it, we bring that into play when there's nothing else that we can do. We've really tried to reduce the physical and psychological stresses on the horse, but we just, we know they're going to have to go through a stressful period and we're going to have to help them get through it. So um, some different questions that we want to ask ourselves first before we start reaching for any kind of supplement to band-aid it. Um, am I overfeeding my horse? Does my horse just have a little bit more energy um, than I can contain? So am I overfeeding my horse with calories? Is the food that I'm feeding too high in energy or is it coming from energy sources that are known to elicit certain behavioral problems? I've got some saying that we don't have any audio. Can anybody hear me? Okay, everybody else can hear, so um, I'm not sure what's going on, Susie. So if we get back to, sorry, there are certain types of energy sources that known to elicit behavioral responses, altered behavioral responses. We know that if we feed energy sources that are coming from high sugars and starches, they are going to give a lot, they can give a lot more of that quick release hyper type energy versus your fats and fibers that are going to be long, slow release energy. Um, is the horse getting enough fiber in his diet? Now, this is a really, really important one. And I think this year I am highlighting this even more because gut health is extremely important. And if we have an uncomfortable horse with poor gut health, research is now showing us that um, there are junctions in the intestinal lining called tight junctions. And they're meant to hold food in the intestine and only let small particles of digested material, amino acids, etc., pass through those junctions into the bloodstream to go off and get used. But stress, and one of those stresses is not having enough fiber in the diet, is known to damage those tight junctions and they can open. And then toxins and bacteria can leak out of the intestine into the bloodstream. Now, some of the symptoms of this leaky gut syndrome is random altered behavior that does not seem to be able to be controlled. Um, and no amount of calming supplement is going to be able to overcome this problem with this leaky gut. So we need to make sure that we've got enough fiber in our horse's diet and it's not just the quantity of fiber but it's the quality of the fiber and it's actually different types of fibers. Horses in the wild eat a wide variety of forages and we know that if you put a horse in a stall and you bed them on shavings or you bed them on straw and you give them one type of hay, not a mixed grass hay but you just give them say it's straight alfalfa hay or straight Timothy hay, we know that um, horses will tend to go into the stall and eat forages that, that are not as appealing that you would think they don't want to eat that. But randomly, they will start to select some higher fiber, um, higher 
perhaps non-digestible fiber forages. Um, is the is the horse spending too much time in the stall or the stable, i.e. not getting enough exercise? Does my horse have enough turnout time to relax, interact with other horses? Horses are herd animals. They really like companionship, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. They like to know that other horses are around. They like to interact with other horses. I was looking, uh, watching a video the other night of some barn design to increase interaction and decrease stress. And a, a very prominent Olympic rider designed his barn with um, bars in between the top part of the stalls so that the horses could actually sniff and smell and see each other. There wasn't just one solid wall. And that he had noted had decreased verbal and physical stress in his horses. Is the barn or stable environment stressful? Do you have loud music playing all the time? <clears throat> Do you have blowers going while the horses are in the stalls? Is it hustling and bustling? Is there a lot of activity going on? Um, other things that people have done are having certain areas of the barn that are tack up areas, wash stall areas, so that when the horse is in his stall, he's resting in his stall. He's not getting tacked up in his stall. He's not getting a bunch of, you know, vaccinations or dewormers or anything stressful happening in a stall. That's all happening in the wash area or in the tack up area so that when they're in the stall, they know that that is their de-stress area. Um, is the horse's behavior due to pain? Does he have some underlying chronic pain issue, which we know increases stress? Or is it due to the saddle or the bridle not fitting properly? Are the teeth in need of attention? Because we know if there's hooks in the horse's mouth, that extremely increases um, the stress response in the horse. Is this a new behavior? When did it start and why? Did it start when a new environmental condition happened? Did it start when a new trainer came or a new horse came into the barn? Is there an outside trigger for this behavior? Is the horse losing weight? Could this be due to um, internal pain due to gastric or colonic ulceration? Is it mayor's behavior due to a hormonal cycle, which is also a pain and inflammatory response? Uh, and does the behavior only occur at certain times? So I think we need to answer all of these questions so that we can best mitigate what is causing this stress in the horse and, find, and give a, a, a calming supplement the best chance of working by selecting it for instances where we've done everything else to control the stress and we know that there's still some stress like trailering. Um, there are things that we can do. We can trailer a horse with a buddy. We can make sure that they've eaten alfalfa beforehand. But we do know that trailering is very stressful. So can we feed a, a, a calming supplement prior to, to trailering to help decrease that? Um, what's going to be in the majority of your calming supplements? Well, magnesium. And, and why magnesium? Well, magnesium, it's 60% of magnesium is found in the skeleton and 30% of magnesium is found in the muscle. Um, it is involved in enzyme regulation in muscle contraction and it also helps to regulate calcium. Um, absorbed in the small and large intestine. And we know that magnesium sulfate has been used as an anesthetic. Now, you know, anytime we um, find uh, magnesium to perhaps, or a, a, a vitamin or a mineral to um, have some kind of a calming effect, we have to also be very careful that we're not going to over, overdo it um, because then if we start overdoing it, there are other issues um, that can arise from perhaps feeding way too much magnesium. So how researchers came to uh, the idea that magnesium may be good in a calming supplement is if a horse is deficient in magnesium, 
We do notice nervousness, muscle tremors, and incoordination. But on the flip side, excess magnesium really compromises intestinal integrity. So if we are feeding far too much magnesium, we can be affecting that intestinal integrity, which we know causes stress and can cause behavioral modification anyway. So it's a real fine line. We want to stay right there in the middle. Um, if you look at some of the calming supplements and say, well, it's just magnesium and that's really expensive. Why don't I just feed mag Epsom salts? Um, because that's a type of magnesium that is really poorly absorbed and has a laxative effect in the horse. Um, and that would cause dehydration, which we know increases stress as well. If we feed um, excess magnesium, we can also block the uptake of calcium as well as blocking um, high phosphorus diets can block magnesium uptake. So if we're feeding a lot of wheat bran, for example, you um, may want to make sure that you're supplementing with extra magnesium. So a research study done a while back in Australia actually was one of the first to compare feeding magnesium, oral forms of magnesium, to what we consider the kind of industry standard of calming, which is a drug, ace promazine. Um, and they fed magnesium aspartate, and just like most of our minerals, there are multiple different sources, but they fed magnesium aspartate at either 2.4 gram, 5 grams or 10 grams per day. Um, at the higher level, plus what they were getting out of the forage and the grain, um, we did notice higher calcium urinary calcium excretion. Remember what I said here, um, that if you start to get excess calcium, excess magnesium, it can block calcium uptake. And so that's what was happening a little bit here with the 10 grams um, of magnesium a day. But what they did find was they were able to um, they did a, uh, a shoot test where they measured the time it took to get from horses to get from point A to point B in a shoot after they scared them. Um, and when they were feeding the high levels of magnesium, it mimicked when they were being fed that level or injected with that level of ace promazine. So uh, yes, magnesium certainly can have calming effects on the horse, but excess, too much magnesium can be detrimental. And we also want to make sure that we're trying to control the stresses that are causing um, the behavior modification in the first place. Um, so <clears throat> magnesium, as it comes down to uh, the, it's actually in the 2018 guidelines for drugs and medications for the United States Equestrian Federation. Um, it's the same in the 2018 book that no injectable substances may be administered to horses or ponies within a 12 hour prior to competing um, with the exception of therapeutic fluids. Now, these fluids must not be supplemented with concentrated electrolytes such as magnesium. So, you know, the USEF is, is cottoned on to the um, extra use of magnesium to um, maybe mask or alter behavior. So let's look at um, the calm B, the formula calm B. It's got amino acids, lysine, it's got thiamine, which is a B vitamin, the magnesium, tryptophan, and some other B vitamins. The tube, um, we've corrected paste consistency. We have a new paste manufacturer. We've got a small 35 gram single use tube. Now, why a single use tube? You feel like, well, I want to. You know, if I had a bigger tube, I can get two um, doses out of it. Or I can get multiple doses out of it. But really what we find with any paste products, whether it be calming or probiotics, you know, single use is better to preserve product consistency. And especially where people or had issues with um, squeezing the combi out of the tube. And if your horse is already a little bit excitable, you don't want to be messing around. Um, <clears throat> so... We um, made sure that it was a single serve tube to really squeeze, be able to maintain product consistency and quality. 
um, it's, this has a significant amount of magnesium. Now, the source of magnesium is magnesium carbonate, which is safe for horses. And um, at 10, this is right up there around that 10 grams a day that we saw in the previous research. Magnesium carbonate is slightly less bioavailable than magnesium aspartate. So I feel comfortable with putting this amount of magnesium carbonate here. But this amount is what it takes um, to see those effects. And because of the form magnesium carbonate, I'm not as concerned about blocking calcium uptake. Again, we've still got our um, other amino acids. Um, now, tryptophan has over the years, people question, oh, well, is tryptophan a banned substance? No. Tryptophan is not a banned or controlled substance. It's not a banned or controlled substance with the FEI, with the USEF, and the one that seems to keep popping up is the US Endurance Association. But what I will say with any calming supplement is when it comes down to the kind of ethics and morals of um, feeding calming supplements or any kind of supplement. If you're feeding the supplement to mask behavior, to mask pain, to alter behavior and give yourself a performance and heart advantage, then all organizations are against that. But there's no test for tryptophan or excess tryptophan because tryptophan is naturally occurring in the horse's body. Um, it's a and what does it actually do? So it's a naturally occurring amino acid and it supports the production of the neurotransmitter serotonin, which supports calm and balanced nervous system. Um, thiamine, which is a B vitamin, supports um, energy production, which you're like, well, I don't need any extra energy production, but it's not causing the horse to have energy uh, change its behavior, but it's focus. Um, formation of red blood cells, healthy appetite, um, but it also balances chemical reactions in the brain and nervous system. Um, lysine, we'll see that a lot of times. Um, if horses are deficient in lysine or low lysine when they don't have great muscle tone or top line. Um, lysine has a role as a building block to those proteins, but it also impacts the regulation of calcium metabolism, which is for muscle contraction, but also um, vision and, and mood. So I always say though, if, if a customer comes and says, I think I need a calming supplement, I think I want to try the Calm B, I like to ask a lot of questions first. All of those initial questions that we went through, and oftentimes I'm going to recommend the Cool Gut because nine times out of ten ulcers are usually the cause of poor behavior and not just an inherent nervousness. Now, on the flip side, let's say we're trailering our horse and he really like, doesn't like to go in the trailer, but we've got to take him from point A to point B, then cool gut is not going to calm his nervousness about getting in the trailer. It's truly a psychological nervousness. So um, the calm B paste would definitely help there. If it's a physical issue causing the nervousness or the excitability, try and mitigate that physical. If it's psychological, that's more where we can use our calming supplements. Our mare relief, um, one of the questions earlier was about moody mares. Um, you know, I think that my take on um, the kind of herbal remedies is that it works for some there's not as much research when it comes to the herbal uh, supplements in horses as compared to our chelated minerals or probiotics, prebiotics. So is it going to hurt your horse? No, but um, I can't guarantee that it will work for every horse. We've also got a, um, an, um, a small amount of magnesium carbonate in here as well. When it comes down to... Um, these specific ingredients and how they may help um, when looking at the research that's been more done in humans. Don Quai is a popular herb, 
for treating disorders um, in women with irregular cycles, uh, premenstrual syndrome. Um, it has non-estrogen active ingredients. Um, ras red raspberry leaf gets a lot of um, hits, I guess, when you Google it. Not necessarily that it's got a lot more research than anything else, but um, improves uterine health function and supports healthy muscular relaxation. Chasteberry extract research carried out in Germany um, says that chasteberry can actually have an, a direct effect on the hypothalamus and um, the hypothalamus is what regulates the pituitary gland. And you've heard of the pituitary gland because that is what gets a tumor on it in horses that get Cushing's or PPID. So um, it is responsible for hormonal signals that regulate everything in the body, including behavior. Placental substance, we've got this um, placental substance here, uterine substance and ovarian substance, supposedly to balance um, hormonal fluctuation. And then these final calcium glucurate, chrysin and indole 3 carbonyl uh, perhaps have a relationship between estrogen and progesterone, um, stabling, stabilizing mood. We know that by um, feeding sugars, lots of sugars and starches, there's been several research papers in horses that have changed horses' behavior by the types of energy substrates that we're feeding. So by substituting those high sugar feeds with high fat feeds to maintain body condition and energy level um, without altering behavior, adding oil to the diet can be beneficial. Now, the benefit of the DAC oil over other oils is we have that really high concentration of natural vitamin E, 4,000 IUs per pound. Why is vitamin E important? Vitamin E is a powerful antioxidant. Exercise causes these free radicals, inflammation, stress, um, and, and can cause pain. We know that vitamin E can mitigate some of that exercise pain. Um, what I use all the time is um, if you click this link or, or put type this link into your um, website, I use this all the time to see is it a um, is it a banned substance? Is it a controlled substance? Um, and as far as the FEI Clean Sport Magnesium Sulfate injected as a sedative is a controlled substance, um, but orally we haven't got an issue. Um, GABA is another one. It's the active ingredient in Carolina Gold, and it was added to the USEF banned substance list in 2012. Um, I think Anytime we find something that has some benefits, there are always people out there that are going to overuse it and overdo it and, um, you know, directly injecting um, GABA can have really severe side effects, severe head shaking and, and near collapse and, and death. Valerian is another um, supplement that people use. We do not use um, this or GABA in any of our coming products. A reasonable amount of scientific evidence to subject a calming effect of valerian or valerian, valerianic acid um, from valerian plants. No um, scientific published studies in horses, but it is also on the FEI pro prohibited substance list. So, I mentioned there are other things that we can do. And this was a recent research study um, where they actually looked at a companion. You know, we've we've heard funny stories about racehorses that have goats or ponies. Or I worked for a lady who had a miniature jon a donkey that traveled with her show jumpers, um, uh, and you know anecdotally seems to work for some horses. So these researchers actually investigated a companion, um, whether the pre presence of a calm companion horse influences fear reactions in a naive 
subject horse. So they took these calm companions and they paired them with Mustang, wild Mustang stallions. Um, and they really did show that the, the, uh, so the naive subject horses paired with the calm companions showed less fear related behavior and lowered, lower heart rates compared to the subject horses with a control companion. So a companion that was not um, calm at all. So I, I, I looked a little further into this and um, there are other studies that actually showed um, a horse's willingness to go through a stressful situation. If they saw a calm older schoolmaster, uh, I think the study was walking across a top. If they saw the older calm schoolmaster walk a across the top before them, then they were had a lower heart weight and were much more likely to to walk across it. But so I think it puts some science behind the companion, whether it be a goat or a donkey. Um, or it's just another calm horse. Uh, there were some studies looking at trailering horses with and without a buddy. And when you trailered horses with a companion, they had lower cortisol, which is a measure of stress, um, and lower heart rates. So wherever possible, be doing things that are going to help decrease their stress. Um, this is the feeding. How can we use feeding to decrease horses' stress? Well, I mentioned this earlier. Um, horses in the wild graze almost continually. Horses in stalls are meal-fed grains and forages. We know from recent research that impaired gut, gut health can lead to erratic behavior. It can also lead to allergic-like symptoms because we've got all these toxins leaking out of the gut. So what do we want to do? We want to feed small meals often. We want to make sure that we're feeding plenty of forage using these slow feed forage options, but also a variety of different forages, not just monoculture forages, but try giving them some alfalfa and some Timothy. Um, so to give them different options. That's what I had on calming. And I did mention that I wanted to talk about a study that was done um, on citronella. Now I know it's not nutritional and it's not really directly related to calming, but I felt like it fit in with talking about calming because indirectly, if your horse is stressed by bugs, then that can change their behavior as well. We all know a horse can go really crazy if there's flies flying around, biting his legs, biting his face, um, and he may seem uncontrollable. So this study looked at um, citronella um, compared to putting leg wraps on, citronella infused bands around the horse's legs, or classic permethrin um, fly repellents. So citronella, it's a natural insect repellent extracted from lemongrass. It's been shown to repel stable flies, mosquitoes, biting midges, and black flies. In this study, they really just looked at um, the stable flies, repe repelling stable flies. Um, and it's thought that the mode of action for citronella is that it interferes with the host finding um, by blocking the insect odor receptors. They used 59 mils um, of the spray that they mix. So they mix the citronella oil um, with water and they use 59 mils of it to spray over the horse. And that amount was enough to significantly reduce the annoyance behaviors, foot stomping, head shaking um, associated with the body. Now their suggestion was um, that we needed to use more to, to spray on the legs, perhaps. I've actually spoken with the um, the researchers. But what I thought was interesting was the permethrin-based um, fly repellents. And I know, I, I don't know that you're allowed to call the DAC version that you're selling an actual repellent, but um, the permethrin-based fly repellents in this study did not reduce fly counts or fly annoyance behaviors to the same extent that the citronella based product did. So I thought that was pretty interesting um, that the citronella based product really 
or reduce those annoyance behaviors or stress factors in the horse. Um, now they also use these little leg bands that were infused with the citronella and they found that they were pretty good on the legs. But if you extrapolate then use about the the 60 mils over the horse's body, but then also really spray the legs as well or wipe, uh, use a rag and wipe a more concentrated version on the legs. So that's all I have. Can I take any questions? Oh, you're all muted. I'll unmute you all and hopefully it's not a noisy racket. Any questions? No questions today. Okay. Well, I appreciate you all getting on the call. I'm going to end the recording.